I think people get the idea that mixing or engineering isn't particularly musical and that you're kind of missing out on part of the creative process. You're really responsible for making sure that number one, the vision of the artist gets translated to the people that are gonna to listen to it. But then also there's a level of trust that these people give you in order to make their songs feel a certain way. But I really see mixing in particular as being kind of like a conductor, but you're not working in real time. A few years ago, I started mixing on the Focal Solo 6s. They were a big upgrade from the pair of monitors that I was using previously. What I found with the Focals is that I was able to mix a lot faster. I was able to identify issues a lot more quickly and also identify like what I wanted to do with a mix a lot more quickly because I wasn't having to hear through the speaker quite as much. Last year, I think I I have to count, but it's got it's got to be it's got to be over 100 100 songs. <laughs> yeah, just just work and just crank them out. <laughs> The nice thing about working at other studios is that I don't know them as well as the assistant. And so, you know, it depends on how good the assistant is. So like today it's going very well. <laughs> the two main bands that I mostly work with, that I work with regularly are Scary Pockets and Pompa Moose. Work with a bunch of other artists, like I've worked with Wolfpack. And you know, then I mix for all sorts of people. Like it ends up being all over the place. It's great to work with you know, the mixer who's on set with you, or on set, whatever you want to say, at the session. Because sometimes we'll have some ideas about, hey, we want to mix this like this, or like, this is a weird sound, let's make sure that we split that left and right, and it's like stereo or something. And so he's taking notes as we're doing the session. And then also like figuring out the best take, he'll say like, hey, that one had really good energy, like we should definitely choose this one. So it sort of makes the process a little bit faster in post-production because he was there and he has so much context into the sessions. With Scary Pockets, I really do everything audio most of the time. I record the band when we're doing sessions. I also uh, run sound for them live, and I do all the mixing for the stuff that uh, is on, on the internet. We're dealing with a lot of bleeds, so all the instruments are in the same room. We don't use headphones. Uh, it's a lot of fun. There's like very little isolation, which is sort of the opposite of most modern recording. On session days, we record four songs in one day. We arrange and record the song in 90 minutes. There's no room for not being set up or missing a track. So the engineering's got to be meticulous and perfect every single time, and it is. Caleb's meticulous and perfect. We're doing a song a week, so Caleb's just, just constantly outputting at an incredible pace, out, outputting really great mixes. Um, and that's just for pockets. He also does Pomplamoose mixes too. So I started working on Pomplamoose probably two years ago, approximately. Jack is an awesome guy to work for, and he's just very creative and has a ton of ideas. About halfway through, we kind of decided to take it up a notch and start adding some more production to every song. And so I started working with Ben Rose, and we would go in and still build around that single take. But while we were doing it, we started working in studios where we could isolate the vocals. That made a huge difference, and then we would add more synths and background vocals. And slowly over time, we've kind of built a little bit of a, of a post team for that band. We're putting out a song every week and so uh, we added another mixer and that was great. It's crazy to work on that many songs in a year. It's kind of a, like it's a grind but in the best way possible. I think the thing with Caleb is, it's, uh, he's one of those people where there's full trust. So when you give him something, it's gonna be amazing and you don't have to worry about it, which is oh, so nice. I get to work with a lot of the same people all the time. There's this sort of unique combination of trust and then also lack of, lack of preciousness, if that makes any sense. Like we're putting out so much stuff that we want everything that we do to be a super high quality and it really is. I think one of the things that's, that's crippling to artists that maybe wanna do something regularly or have some sort of regular output is there's a time to be precious with things and there's a time not to. And so if you're gonna be doing something like this, you can't bank your whole identity as an artist on this single thing that you're putting out. And it's kind of awesome because if it stinks, like it'll be lost to the world in three weeks. Like it, we won't ever <laughs> probably talk about it again because you've put out 
50 songs in the last year if you're doing it on a weekly basis. A lot of artists get really nitpicky about individual parts and like the really small things. But as a mixer, I kind of feel like once you nail the feel of a thing, like there's a, there's a point I hit in a lot of mixes where I will just start grooving to the music and I know that I'm maybe not done all the way, but that I'm definitely going the right direction. And sometimes that's the point to like quit messing with stuff, like hands off, like, oh, okay, now this tune is danceable. It wasn't danceable, but now, now it is. And there's just something that's so creatively fulfilling in that. I've been taking the clear pros with me to sessions. Uh, that's one of the great things about headphones is that if you know a good pair of headphones really well, you can engineer anywhere. So when I go to other spaces and I'm working, uh, I can reference the mains based on what I'm hearing out of the, out of the headphones. They're very accurate. They definitely sound like they're from the same family. They've actually helped me in my mixing in my space a, a fair bit as well. It has been a couple times where, you know, I was in the last like 10% of a mix. It's like there's something weird going on up here and I was just having a hard time finding it and I put on the cans and it was like, oh, that's, that's what it is. It's in this track. One thing that I've been really digging about the Focals is how open they sound. And I can really hear dynamic range and transients pop through in a way that isn't piercing or biting. They're kind of amazing. <laughs> so I work in a pretty small space. I actually really enjoy mixing in here. Mixing in a small space comes with unique challenges though. When we moved in, I had to uh, do a lot of treatment. So on the back wall, there's like nine inches of rock wool. So it's just a big old, big old bass trap back there to kind of tame some of the crazy stuff. And when I was buying speakers, I was thinking that I probably needed to focus on speakers that were a little bit smaller. There's no, no chance of mains in, in here. The Solo 6s were in a lineup of speakers that I tested out. And for me and the price point that I was looking at at that point, uh, they just really stood out as being quality speakers that I was gonna wanna listen to for long periods of time and were accurate enough that I could do good mixes on. I feel like the Focals are pretty well matched to how I tend to listen to music and they present the kind of things that are important to me. I really love how smooth the top end is. They also have a lot of low end for being such a small, I mean, they're a six inch speaker. They, they do quite a lot. They've just got a really great frequency response. Once you learn those speakers, you can mix anything on them.